This is Brandon at Tailwater Fly Shop, and today we're tying the Clouser Minnow. All right, so the hook we're using today is a Kamikatsu SL12S in a size two. Uh, and it's really important when you're tying with deer hair uh, that we try to use uh, flat wax nylon. Um, basically just the, the wax coating on this thread is gonna help you put tension on your deer hair without it breaking. Um, so if you can, you can use lighter threads, you know, especially with stuff like clousers um, and probably be okay, but it might be a good idea just to invest in some flat wax nylon to have, you know, anytime you're dying a deer hair fly, just so you can put some, some good tension on the hair and, and not break your thread. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start our thread right here at the eye of the hook. Um, and we're gonna do, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room at the front because all of the materials on this fly are gonna go in front of the eyes. Um, so I'm, instead of like the usual, you know, 10 or 12 wraps, I'm gonna go probably 12 to 15 here. Um, but I just want plenty of room, you know, at the front of the hook from here to here where I can tie in that bucktail. Uh, and the eyes we're gonna use are presentation eyes in extra small size. Uh, just we're just gonna go plain lead here. Um, this is one of the places where you can really spice up your clouser if you want to. You can go with double pupil eyes, you can use different colors. Um, and then obviously based on the depth you're fishing, uh, you know, you might wanna go heavier and or lighter. So you could put anything from a bead chain all the way up to really a large dumbbell eye here if you want to. Um, this one probably gonna get used for some speckled trout, maybe some redfish stuff like on some, you know, anywhere from maybe three feet to some light sand bottom and 15 inches. So I'm gonna go with that extra small eye. It's just kind of a good versatile weight there for me. Um, we're gonna get this trapped on here with some parachute wraps. And then on my really sparse flies, one thing I've gone to doing, uh, once I get my parachute wraps in, you can see I can still wiggle this eye a little bit. So I'm gonna wrap back and then come back to the, for the front and just kind of put a little dam or like taper of thread. Um, but on the back side and the front side of the eye and that's really just gonna lock it in for me here um, And then we're gonna go back to The front of the hook to tie in our bucktail. So uh, the next material here. This is a large bucktail um, In white or natural depending on who you buy it from uh, this one came from Wopsy. So this is their natural color <clears throat> um, And then on my clousers, I really like to use the top half of the bucktail. Uh, I think we've talked about this in a few other videos, but basically on your bucktail, everything on the bottom half of the bucktail is, is gonna be hollow material. Um, so I'm gonna save this for flies that I don't want to sink. So obviously with the clouser, it's a weighted fly. I wanted to get to the bottom, especially if I'm using it for redfish. Uh, so I'm gonna use the top half of the, the bucktail just because it's not hollow material. Um, so it's gonna sink a little faster and it's just gonna be easier to work with on this fly. So uh, I want it to be, you know, maybe, two times the length of the hook shank, um, anywhere from one and a half to two times of the length, kind of depending on your fishing situation. Uh, and I'm gonna lay it right on top of the eye and just take a couple of wraps and just keep this hair on top of the hook here. Um, and as I wrap closer to my eye, I'm just gonna pull really tight on this hair going back. Um, and once I get to my eyes, I'm just gonna take one tight wrap over uh, and I'm just gonna hold this bucktail right where I want it to go on the back side of the hook and just kind of take some loose to fairly tight wraps back to it and just cover all this up. Um, and at this point you can go ahead and trim your, your excess out on the front of the hook and get rid of that. Um, but you want this thread to come back to, you know, maybe just past the, the hook point. Um, so I'm gonna go, you know, wrap it to about right there um, just so I have a nice, you know, fairly sparse um, piece of white bucktail coming out. Let me trim out this little extra hair here. Uh, and then just to kind of avoid fouling purposes, um, you know, I, obviously I, I think if you guys have watched a few of my videos now, I like tying my, my flash in as far back on the hook as I can just to give it a little bit less, you know, opportunity to foul or, or wrap around the hook shank. Um, so the flash we're going to use in our clouser is just real simple uh, crystal flash and pearl. Um, and I'm actually just going to double this strand over because you see it's going to be way too long anyway. So I'm going to double this over. Uh, to where I have four strands and I'm gonna make it just about the length of my bucktail here uh, And I'm gonna tie it in on one side kind of on like the top half Of the hook shank and then I'm just gonna double over the other strands onto the other side uh, And I'm gonna take this back basically all the way to where my bucktail is again Just like I said to kind of keep it from fouling so you can do the same thing as you did with the bucktail Just pull it in the direction you want it to sit uh, and then wrap it back to wherever 
you're gonna tie that off at. Again, right about the hook point. So, and then straighten this stuff up. Uh, and you can clean this, you know, clean this back half of the fly up a little bit. We're gonna cover it up with bucktail so it doesn't have to be the prettiest thing in the world. Um, and I'm gonna stop right in front of my eyes and that's where we're gonna add our green bucktail. So this is a large northern bucktail from Hairline in Chartreuse. Uh, and again, another place where you can kind of splice up your Krauser if you want. You can go with like an olive, you can go with a tan. Um, just depending on your situation and what colors you like. Uh, we're keeping it classic today, so we're gonna use some Chartreuse. Uh, and I'm gonna do basically about a 50-50 split here on this bucktail. So I'm gonna kind of keep this one pretty sparse. I think. One of the classic mistakes that people make, especially with a clouser being an, you know, a simpler fly to tie and one that many people kind of start is how they learn how to tie flies, uh, is they put way too much material on this hook. So we're gonna keep it you know, really, really sparse. I really only want about a 50-50 blend of bucktail. Um, and I'm gonna match the length uh, exactly how I want it here. And basically, as I wrap this over coming towards you guys, uh, this material is gonna roll on the hook just a little bit. So I'm gonna start kind of at an angle here right on the eyes and just take a couple of pretty tight wraps. Uh, and once I get this bucktail sitting where I want it, I'm just gonna prop it up and pull it back over the hook. So that way you get a fairly even you know, distribution of bucktail from here across both sides of the hook here. Um, take a couple more wraps to lock that in. One of the nice things about the clouser minnow and, and the way that I fish them, uh, you know, usually in troughs for speckled trout or, you know, in a pothole or something like that or up on some light sand bottom, maybe if I'm, I'm beach walking for snook or speckled trout. So you don't necessarily need a weed guard on this because the eyes are going to flip the hook over um, and it's going to ride hook point up. So it's not going to get caught, you know, too much on anything unless you're really fishing it in speckled or um, in over thick grass. Um, so I'm just going to leave it right here, kind of clean up the head of the fly a little bit. Whip finish. Um, and this one's probably not gonna get any glue because mostly just got to bring it down here, so I'm just gonna double whip finish it. Make sure we pull that tight. And you are ready to go fish a Clouser Minnow.